All right, we are on page four of our notes. So if you want to go ahead and turn to page four, otherwise take notes on your own paper, which is fine. What we're going to be looking at now is if we manipulate a reaction, what happens to the K values? And can we calculate new K values by simply manipulating reactions? So let's take a look at this first one. We're going to set up KC, and they are all gases, so they will all count. So I'm going to put my product in the numerator, and I'm going to square it because there's a 2 in front, and I'm going to put my reactants in the denominator, and I'm going to multiply, not add those because I don't want to get that aspect wrong, and that would be the K. Now, what I want you to do is take a look at what was done from here to here. If you notice, the reaction was, was actually flipped. Um, not just reversed, we're not talking about just going from products to reactants, but we've actually flipped the way the reaction is represented. Check our gases and aqueous. There's no solids and liquids, so we're good here. Now let's set up our K value. Again, we put products on top. We multiply, we do not add. And then we put our reactants in the denominator. And I'm going to square that because, again, there's a 2 in front. Now, if you notice when we flipped the reaction, what we did from here to here is we took the inverse. So that means that Kc2 was equal to 1 over Kc for the first reaction. So if you flip a reaction, you take the inverse. Now, let's go to this next one. See how they relate. In going from 1 to 3, what I did is I multiplied the whole reaction by a factor of 1 half. Let's set up our KC. Again, they're all gases. We haven't changed that. So we have our product in the numerator. And this time, there's no 2 in front. There's a 1. And we have our reactant in the denominator to the 1 half, that's not as uncommon as you would think for diatomics. We multiply, never add, and then we'd have I2 to the 1 half. Now, hopefully what you can see is that this is the square root of our original one. So Kc3 is going to be Kc1 to the 1 half. That's the same thing as saying the square root. Now let's see what happens when we add reactions. So if we take reaction 1 plus reaction 2 and we add them together, much like what we did when we did mechanisms for kinetics, you'll see that the cobalt 2 oxide cancels, the solid cobalt cancels. Now I'm not saying this is a mechanism. We do this like we did mechanisms. So if I know the K for one reaction, I know the K for a second. If I can manipulate those to give me a third, I can at least predict or get a mathematical estimate of what the third would be. Now I bring down what's remaining, what was not canceled, and I get my third reaction. Now let's see how these relate to one another. Remember, we don't include solids anyway, so Kc1 is, even with those in there, would be H2 over H2O. The only reason we're going to include H2O here is because it's water vapor, not water liquid. So that's H2O. Kc2 is going to be our CO2 over our carbon monoxide both to the first power. Now, let's set up the expression for Kc3. It's H2 times CO2, those are our products, over H2O times CO2. You don't have to put the times there, excuse me, CO, not CO2. You don't have to put the times there, I'm just doing it to continually emphasize that it's multiplication and not addition there. Now, if you notice, that's simply this expression times that expression. So that means that Kc3 is equal to K1 times K2. And if you did that multiplication, and if I did that right, all I had with me was my iPhone, and those are a little trickier to use, but I get 7.301.
tell me if I'm wrong on that. Check my algebra. You always want to do that. All right. Now, we're going to see examples where we not only add, but we reverse, we multiply, and add. We're going to do all three together. So those are what we would get separately for those, for those mathematical manipulations. Now, this summary is going to be a key thing you want to study. If a reaction is reversed, you take the inverse of the original equilibrium constant to get the new one. If you multiply by a factor, you raise the k value, your original k value, to the power of that factor. Okay, Just like what we did before, we multiplied by 1 half, so we raised it to 1 half. So that means that our k new is going to equal k old raised to, you know, let's just call that factor x, raised to the power of that factor x, okay? If you add reactions, we multiply the equilibrium constants. So we will see that as well when we do our WebAssign and our AP homework. Now, I've added a final one here that we're going to actually use mathematically a number of times. I fixed that typo, and unfortunately, I, I must not have saved the file properly. So it's 0 0.0821. That's the gas constant in atmospheres is typically what's used here. 0 0.0821 for our R. That's our gas constant. And there's the formula. I put it here so you've got kind of all of these together from which to study. And then we'll use that mathematically in a little while. Now, let's talk about using the reaction quotient as a reaction predictor. Again, it's set up, it's calculated the same way as K, but we're going to be either using initial values or some sort of non-equilibrium values. I would say primarily we'll be using initial values in, in our analyses. And often those initial values will come from a stoichiometry instead of the equilibrium ones that our k value use. So that's going to be a key difference. And you'll understand this term in a minute, um, but go ahead and put this there. So q uses i values and k is going to use e values. Hold that thought for just another 10 seconds or so. Now, Let's take a look at how it can be used as a reaction predictor. Um, if k is if q is greater than k, that means that our numerator is too big. Now, certainly it could also mean the denominator is too small, but I think it's easier to think in terms of just one of these. That means we have too much product. And that means in terms of collision theory, products are going to start colliding with one another and being consumed to go to reactant. So that means to reach equilibrium, the reaction will proceed to the reactant side. So reactants would be formed, products would be consumed. If Q is equal to K, that means we are at equilibrium and there would be no shift. Okay. Now, if Q is less than K, that means that my numerator is too small, or conversely, my denominator is too big. My numerator is too small. I don't have enough product. I have too little product. And so I'm going to shift to make more product. So as the reaction proceeds to reach equilibrium again, or for the first time, depending on the situation, I'm going to consume reactant and form product. Now, this is the same concept in terms of pictorially. In this case, Q is less than K, and it's going to shift to the product side to reach equilibrium. Over here, Q is bigger than K, and so it's going to shift from product to reactant to achieve equilibrium. Now, one of my students noted that if you always keep the Q on the left-hand side, that the opening of the greater than or equal sign 
gives you an indication of which direction it's going to shift to reach equilibrium. But you have to always have the Q on the left of the comparison and the K on the right if you're going to use that as a memory trick. It's actually better to think of it and understand it in terms of products over reactants than it is to memorize tricks anyway. Now let's take a look at an example of this. This is you do it for, you have this in your notes, K for this reaction was 0 0.079. Now the only time K changes is with temperature, much like the rate constant K changed with temperature, so does an equilibrium. So as long as we're at constant temperature, we can continue to use that K. Now I have three different scenarios here, each with different initial time is equal to zero initial values. So in this first one, I'm talking about a situation in which, say, I've opened up a valve and allowed a specific amount of NOBR to enter. And initially, that instant before collisions occur and reaction happens, I have none of this and none of that. Well, if you, you have no product, or actually if any of these is a zero, the concept of Q is not helpful. It's evident, it should be self-evident, which direction we're going to go. So this has to proceed to product. So that means I'm going to consume some amount of reactant. I don't know how much, but some amount X. Now, at the C level, at the change, I'm going to use my magic mole ratio. And you'll find that rice tables are actually useful for stoichiometry, but we're going to start on them um, with our equilibrium. Since this is a one to one mole ratio, that means that for every x I lose, I'm going to gain that same amount of NO. Now, to get to the BR2, it was one half over one was the mole ratio, so I'm going to gain plus one half x. E is equal to I plus C, so that means this is going to be 0.1 minus X. This is X, and this would be 1 half X. And that's a start for how we're going to set up our framework for equilibria. Now let's take a look at the next one. New conditions. This is 2 molar. This is 0.1 molar. This is 0.1 molar. Now, in order to determine the change, I do have to calculate Q first. Now, I'm going to let you set up your expression for time's sake. I'm just going to plug in those values. It would be 0.1 to the first, because that's an implied one there, times 0.1 to the 1 half, because of the 1 half in front of the bromine, over 2. And if I do my algebra, and if I did that correctly, I got 0.0158. Which is less than K. Remember, K is 0.079. So that means it's going to, it needs more products. Q isn't big enough. To get to K, I need to increase products, which means I will consume reactant. So that's minus X. Since it's a 1 to 1 mole ratio, that's plus X. Since it's a 1 half to 1 mole ratio, that's plus 1 half X. E is equal to I plus C, so that's 2 minus X, 0 0.1 plus X, and 0 0.1 plus 1 half X. Okay. Now let's do this last one. We're not solving anything here. All I'm doing is showing you how we use Q as our predictor. Now this is 2E, 2.3 times 10 to the minus 4th initial, those little zeros mean at time equals zero, much like we used in our kinetics. And this is 2.3 e to the minus 3. Sorry about that. What's up with you little mimeo pad here? Okay, this is 2.3 times 10 to the minus 3. And this is 2.3 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, if you calculated Q again, and it's the same as we would do before, it'd be NO to the first times BR2 to the one half divided by NOBR. And if we did that, we would find that it is 0 
seven, nine, six. Now this time, Q is greater than K. And if Q is greater than K, that means we have too much product. So to achieve equilibrium, I'm going to consume product and form more reactant. And that will happen until Q equals K again. So I'm going to get X, I'm going to lose X, I'm going to lose one half X. I get those just from the magic mole ratios. So this would be 2.3 times 10 to the minus four plus X. And this would be 2.3 times 10 to the minus third minus X at equilibrium. So if we could find X, we would know our equilibrium values. And this is 2.3 times 10 to the minus three, whoops, minus three minus one half X. Okay, so it gives you an indication of how we use Q as a predictor and it should introduce us to how we're going to be using these rice tables in our calculations. So we'll, we'll start that in our next video. Until then, this is Signing off.